I swore I was never going to be a teacher. I started out in the speech therapy field and I worked in that field for 10 years and worked in various school districts. When I worked in one particular school district, I was a little man on the totem pole in the speech department and I was left with early childhood and the kids with autism and the deaf kids, and which I loved all of them. But when I went into the preschool room, I felt like I was at home. I went back and, and got a master's degree in, in early childhood. When this program opened up here at St. Mary's, I jumped at the chance. That's my goal is to be patient and kind. I get up and, and I pray and I meditate and I sit alone so I can be a good teacher. And if you are not patient and kind and it's a hostile environment, you can't learn. To do things with a happy heart, it, it relays such a huge message to the students. If I'm not happy being here, what does that say about them? You're not worth it, because they are. We have a lot of grandparents that can't see the kids very often, and so I send out a letter at the beginning of the school year. If you would like your child to, to be a pen pal with their own grandparent, or if they see them you know, on a regular basis, um, be a pen pal with an assisted living resident. So once a month we make them a little project and then I ask the kids, what do you think we should write about today or this month? And so I'll write a little letter and then they sign their names to it. This is where they start the love of learning. And this is where they get along with the kids and they figure out how to get along. And this is where they develop their self-esteem and their self-confidence. And they start to be proud of themselves here. This is the cornerstone of education. <laughs>Prior to teaching, um, I worked at a grocery store for about 20 years. Uh, Dillon's for about 18 of those years in management. When we had field trips come in Dillon's, they'd always say, hey, go get Steve because he's really good with the kids coming in and he can show them around. I kind of like being around kids and you know teaching them. So the whole time my wife has also taught and she's always inspired me to uh, you know, follow your dreams, follow your heart. I think you'd be really good at teaching. So I quit Dillon's uh, in about the year 2000 uh, in the meantime, I started working at Hederline Elementary School on my friends, Dan Dooling, said, hey, why don't you come and try it? Man, it, they stuck on me. So I worked for a couple years as a Title I math aide. I decided to go back to school when I was 40 years old. Started my first job at Arma, uh, taught third grade and fifth grade two years there. And then I was so blessed to be hired here as a fourth grade teacher at Nettles. And that's where I've been ever since. So I love teaching fourth graders because they're still open-minded. They're still ready to learn. The very first staff meeting of the year in August of 2015, and our uh, administrator, Diane Jackson, said, she posed this question. She said, we were at a model school conference in Atlanta over the summertime. What could we do to start or to make our school one day be a model school? First of all, that's a challenge to me and my colleagues as well. Whitney knew Mike Needham personally. We got a hold of him. And he really bought into it. He goes, I have an idea for you. So we came back right away and we started writing curriculum for um, our STEM program. Uh, we know uh, that a lot of jobs coming up in the future when these kids are probably in high school, college, are gonna be technology engineer related. Um, and so they have a good head start. Uh, recently we uh, planted gardens um, uh, through a grant we had received and they love planting seeds and watching them grow. About the second last day of school, we'll invite all the parents, families in, and the kids get to harvest their garden, and they get to serve it to their parents. My philosophy is let's teach the whole child. You know, let's do, uh, how about some extracurricular things outside of school, and try to motivate them to do that. And so with some of the many lessons and lessons every day, we have a class meeting, uh, we talk about how can you be kind, uh, we do dragons of character, um, what can we do to, um, uh, to make you, 
you know, that whole person. Before I started teaching, I actually went to school to be a graphic designer. And that was not something that I loved. I don't like to sit around all day. I like to move and things like that. And so when I got done, I still was kind of unsure. I actually went to school um, to be a cosmetologist. And I was a cosmetologist for probably, after I graduated, about eight months and decided that it was time to go back to school. Um, I had met my husband and he was actually um, an education major also. And um, at that point in time, I just knew, like that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to work with kids and it was time to really follow my heart. Um, so I taught first grade in Columbus for five years. Sixth grade position was open and I applied for it not thinking I was even gonna get looked at. I mean, a lot of times they don't move people from first grade to sixth grade. That's a huge major jump. And so I actually got the job and I was like, oh my goodness, what have I done? And I went home and I was like, I love these kids. They're just a fun group of kids to really work with. I teach skills that will help them obviously learn to read and things like that. But it's also important to help them develop skills for the future because they're not always going to be in my classroom, obviously, and eventually they're gonna become adults. So FCA started at the middle school almost two years ago. This is the second school year that we've ran it. It just kept growing over time and we just had more kids coming in and coming out. And then we had lots of kids who, they, have no, they didn't even know each other. They're not kids that normally hang out. And these relationships that were built in this 25 minute lunch period, one day a week is just crazy. Um, we have been doing foster care for almost four years now, which is hard to even believe. It's not something that's talked about. Foster care isn't something that is one of those open conversations that a lot of people have. And my, I have a lot of kids in my classes that are actually in the foster care system. A lot of these kids have friends that are coming in and out of the system. And I want my kids to know what the real world is like, that there are kids in our community that we need to help. There's kids in our classroom that we need to help. When we did uh, the foster bags, for, I kind of started saying, each class, let's make one or two bags and I will deliver them. And eventually it grew to over 50, I believe. And it was a really good way to connect those kids with the community and open their hearts and become compassionate. I think it's important to make your kids love coming to your classroom. They work harder for you, number one. Number two, they feel like this is a comfortable environment. And we just have that good relationship where we know we can have a good time, but they learn. And that's what's the most important part is that they're in here learning and they're having fun while doing it.